Okay, I wanted to go into a little bit more detail what orbital angular momentum is and how it relates to light with a, with a tiny smattering of mathematics. Okay, so light has two distinguishing properties, or rather two properties we can distinguish different waves and different photons by. We can, of course, distinguish things by frequency. frequency. This is how often something happens per second. So in this case, so in the case of a light wave, it's how, it's how fast it goes up and down per second. So that can be very, very fast. Very relatively slow for things like uh, long waves um, in, in ra um, ham radio, or very, very, very fast in something like an X-ray or a gamma ray. Well, we also have uh, wavelength, but that doesn't really tell us any additional information because we could take frequency times wavelength, wavelength always equals wave speed, and that's speed of light. So we don't really get any additional information out of here. Uh, we can take energy, energy of a photon, photon being a single bit of light, but that doesn't really tell us anything either because energy is just hf, h is Planck's constant. So you know the frequency, you know the energy, and vice versa. Um, linear momentum, no, and linear on um, straight line, kind of momentum a freight train has, or a quarterback running in the field has. Uh, P. Use the letter P that holds story about Newton and a pimento. Don't go into that. Okay, that would be let's see, h bar k, which is h over which is h f, yeah. Okay, sorry, ring cloud. Once again, goes back to frequency, which goes back to wavelength, which wave vector, don't worry about that. So, you know this, you know that. Of course, we could talk about the pointing vector in other ways to get the angular momentum of a group of photons, but uh, that's not necessary in this case. Although, I mean, so it's certainly a very interesting topic and useful in other contexts. Now, why do I go back to single photon? Uh, I do this because we know frequency is a single photon effect. Um, I mean, this goes back to you know, the old, the old uh, photoelectric effect. Einstein, he said, he said hey, you've got a light, come, come, light proper frequency come in, it knocks off an electron. Uh, no matter how many low ones you have, it won't be enough, but if you have one, a single photon, very, very, even very dim light, it hits the uh, metal, then you got the photoelectric effect because you got a current. So, Einstein said, hey, this means they're individual photons, not just a wave. Um, and that was a big thing in quantum mechanics. That was a big thing, which is kind of ironic because Albert Einstein hated quantum mechanics. He tried to kill it. That got complicated. Weird. Um, yeah, Einstein never accepted quantum. Not really. Okay, so frequency. Frequency is an individual photon effect, and it tells us all this information. Now, there's one other aspect of light that is important. Angular momentum. Now, momentum. In particular, we have spin and orbital angular momentum. Spin. Um, this relates to things like polarization of light. Like, you know, just the ordinary polarizations. You got vertical and vertical uh, and horizontal. That's probably how the Vikings used so-called bits, so-called sunstones, um, bits of. Uh, I say it's calcite. I think I think that's the right mineral. And they used that to navigate because the way polarized light bounces off of water. So the uh, spin. Spin, photo, a single photon can have h bar plus 
or H bar minus. It can be up or it can be down. One unit. That's all. No more, no less. You can't have zero, you can't have bits of it, you can't have fractions. You got that much, and that's it. That's not the end of the story, though. You see, for a long time, I thought that was the end of the story, and I learned the rest of the story, not from Paul Harvey, but... Orbital angular momentum. We can have, plus minus, um, I'm not even going to say plus minus right there, I'm going to say L H bar. But L can be any integer real. I'm not sure. It's mathematical how you're supposed to write it, but any any real integer. You want to do negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, positive three, off to infinity, off to infinity, either way. Any positive number. Um, there, I know we have, we have, there's been, I have a paper on hand where they have made N, or L, I guess I'm using L in this case, L as high as 200. And I don't have the paper on hand, but I seem to remember one where it was, well, in the thousands, maybe a hundred thousand, maybe just in the thousands, well, much higher than this anyway. Um, I'll say 10,000. In any case, we don't know any limit. It could be crazy, crazy big. What can we do with this? Well, it could be a huge for communications. Huge. The uh, radio spectrum. Radio spectrum isn't a huge, such a huge deal. Um, I mean, we're all listening to Pandora at this point anyway. Um, but the microwave spectrum, that's big. That's huge. If companies realized what the potential is here, they would be scrambling over their feet with buckets of money to throw at people. People smarter than me, probably. But, huge potential. Because um, everything boils down to light. Okay. Four fundamental forces. Okay. We have the two electromagnetic, the uh, two nuclear forces. The so-called nuclear strong, nuclear weak. Unless you're doing something nuclear, they don't matter. Um, you got gravity, which is useful for keeping your feet on the ground and not too much else. Which leaves you with the last one, the electromagnetic force. Electricity, electric fields, magnetic fields, a light, everything having to do with light, everything from radio waves to visible light to infrared, microwave, ultraviolet, terahertz, like for use in the airport, um, and ultraviolet, I say, uh, x-rays, gamma rays, that's all the electromagnetic waves. Uh, so, oh, everything that keeps atoms to hold, holding together, the whole entire field of chemistry, it's all, that's all electric fields from atoms and electrons and ions and things like that. So, it's huge. Now we thought we understood that all the rest to it, and we've been primarily focusing on frequency and a little bit on spin. Spin's pretty important, especially in chemistry. But the amount of potential we can do here, a lot of fun stuff. Now, how do we know that orbital angular momentum is an individual photon effect? Maybe it's just a group photon effect, and this is all just a bitter lie we'll cry ourselves to sleep over. But it's not. You see, the, uh, there are, we can show individual photon effects with OAM, such as a double slit experiment, or we can show entanglement and do funny things like Bell's inequality with orbital angular momentum. So we know it's so we know it's a uh, individual photon property, which means that there's a whole lot we can do that we're not, we aren't. Um, I explained this last time. I'm going to explain it again real quick. The waves. Okay. This is what your 
I'll say L equals plus or minus 1 for the orbital angular momentum looks like. As opposed to your more simple what am I doing? A simple like um, ordinary electromagnetic wave. Um, if you've got regular old vertical polarization, then it just goes up, goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. It's a little more weird. It has better angular momentum in. Now the wave is just a bit more weirdly complicated. And it does. And it gets more complicated. Now this has to do with, we can also rewrite this with phase. That's not my preferred way, but certainly a very good way. That might be better for some, um, some methods. Now, in fact, it, it makes more clear how the, uh, how, for instance, both sides send a radio wave using a dish Here's the clever thing about the dish, is that it was split so that one end was a little bit further, this is a little bit further back than this, so that when a wave came in and bounced off, then part of the wave was set back a little bit. Part of the, um, and instead of just throwing it all out of phase, what it did was it gave, it changed the amount of the phasing of the, of the, of the photon wave. Or basically it turned this into that and vice versa. Hypothetically, you can use it to turn this into that and so forth. Although my guess is that this will not be, this might be useful for in microwaves, maybe. But my guess is that it's not. In any case, what I'm focusing on in my own research is for use in radio waves and how we can build different kinds of antennas that will pick up this instead of that, or this instead of that. See if we can distinguish this. And we'll be, I'll be talking about that more in the future. Thank you.